Hey, this is Jeb Bush, and we're um, participating in class in session with my good friend Romero Brito in his gallery. Romero, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Considering this whole situation, I'm coming to the studio every day, and uh, and I've been creating you know, paintings, and uh, I've been in touch with my collectors, you know, friends, and uh, and me, you know, talking. I'm so happy to be here with you today, and so I'm I'm hanging there here. You're, you're, you're one of the hardest working uh, people that I know, and you do it with such joy and happiness. Uh, it's infectious. I wish everybody could see your uh, work studio. It is the most amazing place. I've taken my grandchildren there to, to, to paint with you, and it's, uh, it's an experience of a lifetime. Who's that behind you, by the way? No, thank you very much. Who? Oh, it's all my God, of course, your wonderful mother. I did her portrait, you know, for that beautiful birthday party. We kind of went for it, and I was so honored to be there and, and see her and, uh, and wish her happy birthday. It was beautiful. So, Romero, you grew up in Re Recife, Brazil, and uh, in, a, in a large family. What, what was it like, uh, and what was your, how did your family shape who you are today? Well, it was, you know, first of all, it was, uh, was uh, I, very challenging. You know, I, uh, my mother was a single mother. She had so many kids, and... Uh, Today, when uh, you know having my son and you know, one child is a is a big responsibility. I can only imagine to have like nine. It was like my mother was a hero, and um, it was difficult. And uh, one of the things that for me was being like it was almost like uh, a um, miracle in a way was television. Believe it or not, because television brought me to a world that I never thought existed around me, surrounding me. You know. And, uh, and I dream about that world and, uh, and I always took the best of it from television. And uh, of course, I cannot suggest today for anybody, any child or any parent to say, put your child in front of the TV for them to dream because there's so many other things out there. At that point in Brazil, was was soap opera. And, uh, and I, for some reason, I love the soap opera and I dream about that, you know, and here I am. But uh, I... I always tell people, please, please, it's very important. Don't stop dreaming, and uh, which is a very difficult task to ask somebody to do, um, to keep dreaming even when you are awake. But anyway, here I am, and, uh, and I'm super honored to be uh, interviewed today by you, Jeb, which I have a huge admiration to you and your entire family. And it's always wonderful to have you and uh, your, your children, your grandchildren in Columba, and the friends come over to the studio. So, so Romero, this is gonna go out to students all around, um, all around the country. And um, some of them um, have, have a similar kind of dream of being an artist. What, what motivated you to be an artist and when did that happen? And how did you act on that, um, that, that dream that, that came to you? You know, uh, as, since I was a kid, I always liked art, you know? And there's so many children today I see so many children that they love they, you know, to be around arts, being, you know, creating, doing drawings. And then when you're a kid, you don't know what you really wanted to do. And then as you grow older, you know, you have to go through the whole process as we all go, go to school and then you know, have to figure out what are you gonna do? And sometimes you're pressured by your parents, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you know, and then, and then you end up, you know, being law school or you end up like receiving a doctor or being that, being an engineer, whatever. And uh, at that point, what I wanted to do was to change my life. And what I thought was, okay, maybe I should go to law school, become a diplomat. I had art, but I never knew that that was, you know, my destiny. But then there was a point that I, I was so miserable going to law school. And it was a decision that when I think back, I was like, it was a major decision for one to take without having no guidance from no one, you know. And I just decided about, you know what, this, I'm so unhappy. I'm going to not go to law school anymore, and I'm gonna try my art. So I do uh, always suggest to anybody that you need to find that thing that you love to do. And once you find it, and you have to go for it, not only as an artist, you know, but I think uh, it's like anything. But as an artist, you, if you're gonna decide about being an artist, you have to go work even more, because we all need art, we all need inspiration, but in the end of the day, we, you know, most of the people leave this inspiration, this beautiful thing that the art brings to us, to the last moment, you know what I mean? You gotta become successful as a businessman, and then as you become successful, and later on in life, you go to the opera house. You're gonna go to see a ballet, you're gonna to see art, you're gonna acquire art and everything. People leave art sometimes at the last minute. 
um, luckily here in America, the, the, the audience is so large that there's all kind of people, you know, um, acquiring and living on. I don't know so, if I answered the question, it was a long one. No, no, you got it, it was great. So at the age of 20, you left uh, Brazil, you left Recife to go to Paris. What was the motivation to do that? Well, and that's when I decided uh, that I wanted to venture the world. You know, I, you know, I left my, 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 you know, the nest of my mother, you know, behind. And I said, you know, let me venture the world and see what happened. And that's what I did. And uh, I always wanted to travel. I always want to, you know, go to France and go to England, go to Germany, go to those, Europe, to, you know, to really go back to a place we call, uh, at that time in Brazil, in Brazil, the the birth, you know, of, you know, Western civilization, you know, where, you know, everything started in you know, art and everything. So that's what I did. And for me, it was amazing, you know, to see stand in front of original paintings the artists have done 500 years ago, like Mona Lisa and, and so many other pieces of art. It was very profound in me. Well, let's, let's get a few questions from students. Uh, the first one is from uh, Kassid. A, he's a college student from the University of South Florida. And uh, his question is, what were the first steps you took in founding the Happy Art Movement? And why don't you describe what the Happy Art Movement is? Well, the Happy Art Movement, basically, uh, it's been happening. I didn't even know what's happening. People telling me, Romero, your art makes me so happy. You know, every time I see your art, I mean, notes and letters and all kinds of things. You know, a lady, the first time I remember uh, having a message from someone, and she said, I have cancer and I have your art, art all over my place. I just came out of the hospital. And your art made me feel so energetic. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And it was more and more people tell me this kind of thing. And then recently, a friend of mine uh, had told me, Romero, I think you, you started this movement because there's so many people. And then it gave me uh, the idea and then the thought brought me back to so many more other comments from teachers. Um, a lady told me that I started a movement, not necessarily a, a happy art, but an art movement. But so many people are copying my work and get inspired and so forth. So I was like, you know what, I had to embrace this idea of the, you know, the happy art movement and being the founder of the happy art movement. And uh, was, you know, Lucas, you know, he just, you know, joined the organization. Um, he was a, a practicing doctor in a hospital in Miami, not Miami, in uh, Jacksonville, you know, uh, the Mayo Clinic, so. Awesome. So um, another question is from Amanda and she, uh, She's a senior at Dunedin High School, which is over in, in uh, the Tampa Bay area. And her, her question is, what advice would you give to a visual art student entering an art college? Um, in the end of the day, you know, and you go back in history, so many artists, when you're an artist, you're an artist, and there you go. I mean, it's like, you know, even if you've never become famous or successful, it's like, I compare being an artist as a diamond. You know, you're a diamond no matter what, even if somebody never find you, but one day you have a trillion years down Earth, if they find you and there you go, you steal a diamond, even if nobody knows you. But no teacher is going to give you a, uh, a style and inspiration that you have to have every day when you stand up in front of a canvas. You know, you have to start something new or something or do something. So that's one thing that you have to have all you've done. And that goes not only in art, but in business and anything. If you don't have the inspiration to stand up and go and do what what you want, what you love. You know, there's no college, there's no Harvard, not Columbia, nothing but you. Oh, great. Uh, that kind of leads to the, to, the, to the last student question, which is from Ryan, who's a senior at uh, the Dreyfus School of the Arts in Palm Beach, an amazing school. And uh, his question is, what does the creative process for you, how's it start and what's it, what's it feel like and look like? How do you how, you know, how, do you, how, how would you encourage students to embrace a, the creative process? Okay. Um, I think the process could be as organic and as spontaneous as you can imagine. You can, you can be like in the street. You can have, you know, like this idea and then you can, you know, do a sketch as you are on the road. You can, of course, I don't suggest nobody to do a sketch as you're driving. It's not a good idea. But you can have in your mind, it happened to me, I have this idea, everything starts in your mind, and then you go to the studio, and then you do a sketch. But there's so many ways of getting um, inspiration to go and, and, and create something. But in my case, I start, you know, let's say, if it's a painter, I do a sketch, 
if the commission I do a sketch and some co collectors want to see a sketch and then uh, some of the other ones they don't and uh, but I, I my suggestion is that the more you do the more uh, the more your process go more fluid and the more you can create and uh, and ideas is like by the a gazillion in my head and I'm sure the heads of artists out there you have so many ideas and uh, but it's very important to have a discipline to go to the studio or to have a place in your house somewhere where you do that job, where you do what you love every day, and it's a safe place that you love to be there. So you've you've said that you were Brazilian born and Miami made. What's what's uh, what's your feeling about Miami? And what why why did you why did you pick um, our hometown? Yeah, well, I mean, I I was born in Brazil, but. You know, when I came over here, I felt like was, I, I was born again, you know, and then I, you know, I come out with this kind of answer because here in Miami, that's where my art really became more, I became successful as an artist. You know, people embraced my work. Actually, I was having a conversation yesterday, you know, because Miami, Miami, it's, it's a place where there's people from so many places, you know, there's immigrants from all over and, uh, and this is like a laboratory of, uh, a place like where it's such fertile place to be the energy and uh, and people embrace my art it didn't they didn't care where i came from they were not you know asking me if my who was who or whatever they just they just embrace my art and they would just see my work for my work and little little by little people start seeing me and that's miami miami is a great place to be and i'm so glad that i didn't go anywhere else because i you know the growth of my art is happening with the growth of miami and uh in particular, you know, the time that you're the governor, there's so many things in the arts happen here in the state of Florida too, Jeff. Well, you were such a strong ambassador for uh, Columban and our efforts. Um, without you, we wouldn't have been as successful advancing the idea that art is important in school and it's important to enhance the quality of life for people uh, all across the state. So, Romero, you, you've, been, you've done some in incredible projects. Uh, the FIFA World Cup in Brazil, the Super Bowl here in Miami, uh, the pyramids that you put in Hyde Park, which, uh, I, you know, talking about an incredible uh, idea that um, became the focal point in, in one of the great cities of the world. What, what, what has been your favorite project and why? Well, I mean, all those projects were so, um, mean, it's so meaningful to me, each one of them. And um, I mean, it's like, and I have great memories about that, you know, like the Hyde Park one, you know, and the Super Bowl and, and so many others. But the one that really uh, touched me so much, is so meaningful is when I did a, a, a body of work, a collection of large pieces, all celebrating education. And I did that um, um, request to the United Nations and Kofi Annan spoke about those pieces. And uh, it was uh, so unique because I believe in education, and when you have education, you you, you can conquer things, you can make better decisions. So my pain is was promoting education, and became stamps, poster stamp for U.S. and Switzerland and, and Austria as well. So it was uh, a beautiful collaboration. It was very special. But you know, I've done so many other ones, and each one of them has their own like specialty too. But education is like a big thing. So um, I know you've been totally uh, involved uh, from the very beginning in the Best Buddies program uh, with, uh, with Andrew Schreiber and his family, and uh, that's now expanded into a, an incredible organization, thanks to your support and many others. What was the motivation to, to, to support uh, Best Buddies, which is a program that helps uh, children with uh, developmental disabilities? Well, I mean, it was one of those things that uh, it goes back to uh, uh, as far as when I was a kid, you know, I, the first time that I bought a gift to someone, it was a gift for uh, my brother's son. His name is Elvis. And I remember going to a supermarket and buying something. I don't recall exactly what it was, but it was a gift. And that the feeling I still have today. And, and when I moved to America, um, more and more, I started seeing how people went through difficult times and they end up doing something, you know, to help others. And, uh, and then I was, you know, um, I was introduced to Anthony and then we became friends and I was introduced to Best Buddies and I learned about the organization. And that time, you know, I was working, you know, um, uh, in Coconut Grove and I did my first actually charity uh, um, event with someone 
um, that was for the Red Cross. And once my art was could raise funds for organization, I was like, wow, that's such a great feeling. And once I could see this more and more happening with Best Buddies, I was more and more like enchanted and more excited. And then I got more involved with Best Buddies. And, uh, you know, because then again, you know, I think it's, uh, it's hard enough for someone with everything working in your body, you know, well, and imagine if you have some challenge, you know, for you to do for your families and, you know, and your, you know, friends. So it's a great organization. I'm really happy that I was able throughout the years to help somehow and, and, and whatever I can do, you know, to it. And, and now I'm working with so many other charities, organizations too, but it is a very special charity, Best Buddies. And I'm happy. So, I'm you know, uh, Kalum and I for over 20 years have, have raised money for scholarships for art students, seniors that are going to college to provide some financial support. It's called Arts for Life. And you've been a great, uh, proponent of that and a supporter of it. This year, we're, by the way, we're, we're going to have a virtual um, event. Instead of the stage of the, of the uh, Performing Arts Center, we're going to do it virtually and have performances. Why do you think, why do you think art and education is so important? I think uh, education and arts, you know, like, first of all, I think education can definitely open people's mind, you know, and uh, to understand each to understand themselves and understand others and find answers. If somebody cannot, especially in the world that we live today, if you, if you don't have somebody next to you, you can Google and then you can have an answer. You know, but how can you read if you, if you don't know how to read, how you can add, do that by yourself? So I think education gives people, you know, um, you feel definitely more, um, more, you know, how, empowered that you can do something, you know, that you feel more, you know, uh, Confident, you know, that, okay, I learn about that. If, even if you study in you know, school, like uh, something that you think that you, you're never going to use, but it gives some sort of confidence that you learn and you went through the process and there you are, you know, you finish college or you got some sort of education and then you are able to understand and then it goes to the arts. And I think, you know, it, it brings people, it's like, if you have a pet, you know, um, if you have a pet, you know, if you have, if you love, if you love children, you know, right there, you can show some sort of sensibilities. And I think, you know, if you do love art, show some sort of sensibilities and you try to understand what's in the mind of those artists. And, um, and that's why, you know, so many people, after they did so much, you know, they're gonna go to listen to the opera and understand that what is the meaning of this, all this, what, what are we here for? And uh, what's the beauty of this, you know, this painting, it could be a sculpture, it could be, like, as I say, a play or, you know, a ballet or something, you know, like, and then you're going to go to a whole world that, you know, is very special and, uh, and is what we all want, love, peace, and happiness. So I know a lot of people think that artists are kind of carefree and fancy free. They don't, you know, they're not disciplined. It's, it's, they just, they're artists. Uh, but in fact, uh, I know in your own personal life, uh, you're incredibly disciplined uh, in the process of making art, um, allows you to, to live uh, a purposeful life that gives you joy, but it also um, brings uh, discipline that could be used to, for, you're a phenomenal artist, but there are a lot of people that go to school, take art courses, learn how to play the piano or whatever, and those skills can be translated directly, right, into everything. You can be, you can, you can be a better carpenter, you can be a better lawyer, you can be a better anything if you, um, if, if you experience the, uh, uh, the joy of, of, of music or uh, performing arts or whatever. And I, I just think that discipline sometimes we think is not, it's not a serious thing, but it's, uh, it's really important, I think. So important. I mean, discipline, if you don't have discipline, I have a very interesting story. I, I had this friend of mine, I cannot mention the name, but someone that I know, you know, and then went to work to university and it went to one of the best universities in America for business. And guess what? And this person never moved nowhere, then just, he's still not done anything because basically he loves the, the discipline, you know, to start something. It can be something like very small, but you had to start somewhere. And a lot of time people, they want to have the big move and then the big moment, like all at once. And the discipline to go every day and show that you can do it, you can do it. It's a good thing for you. It's a good thing for people around you, but you've got to do it. And then a lot of time, you know, people doesn't want to, they don't have the discipline, the drive, and it's really 
challenging. I mean, I've been hiring people for so many people, so many years, you know, here in the studio, and I see that, you know, sometimes like a week that goes with the flame, like really fired up and then everything goes back. And it's really difficult, you know, because there's only so much I can do to uh, give like um, the inspiration to someone, you know, I, I think, you know, we can give kind of some sort of kind of guidance, you can give some kind of a tip, but there's only so much you can do. So one last question. I've asked all of all of our participants in class in session um, this the following question. Um, what have you ever failed in life and what did you learn from from failure? Oh, my God, I've done a lot of mistakes. So many. But you know, you cannot, you have to learn from your mistakes. Every time something happened, I try my best not to do it again, you know? And um, I mean, of course, I mean, you can never, I mean, there's nobody. I mean, I, I usually tell people, listen, I'm, I can be the nicest person, but I'm not God, you know? So I've done so many mistakes, but I definitely try to think a lot before I do my things, you know, over and over again. And, uh, you know, especially because when I, so many decisions that I've done, I didn't have like my father, my grandfather, or somebody that, you know, that would tell you um, with love and they wouldn't care about nothing, but just your success, you know. And um, so I did a lot of things by my own instinct and my own decisions. And, um, but I think it's always good to have someone that you can talk to, you know, someone like a mentor, somebody who admires, somebody who respect, you know, and that can be very helpful. But yes, I, I have a lot of lessons. And, um, but I'm really open to learn more and, uh, and I don't have all the answers, but I always have the best intention. And I think it's very important have the best intention and have incredible friends around you so that they can inspire you and people that have done things, you know, not that I don't want to hang out with someone who never did anything, but it's just important to be around people and to have friends that can elevate you all the time. And uh, by the way, I have a surprise here. He's just walking here, Brandon. Come on, say hello, Brandon. He bring a tree here, Plant. Say hello, Jeff. Say hello. Hey. Hey. I know. He's How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good. Nice T-shirt. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, Romero, it's a, it's a joy to be with you. Uh, oh, great, Jeff. Thank you so much for all you do to bring joy to the lives of so many people. Oh, thank you. I'm honored. I'm super happy. Please say hello to Columba and the kids and the grandchildren. And right. a beautiful weekend, Jab. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Take Thanks. care. See ya. See you. Ciao.